In this topic, we're going to have a look at the errors that can occur when we measure an item. We're talking about physically measuring something. So taking a ruler, for example, and measuring an item. And they are saying that there are a number of mistakes or errors that can come into it. Here are some that they suggest. The zero on the scale of the measuring instrument must coincide with the end of the object. So that if that is out in any way, or if this is out in any way, then we're going to have mistakes. A second possible error is when the end of the measuring instrument has been damaged. And um, in this way, we'll say that we can't go to zero because it's not there. So we'll go to one. And then, of course, we've got to be careful that we subtract one from the final answer. And the last one is a thing called parallax, uh, parallax error, which occurs when we look at an object from different angles. And so the measurement that we give will be out depending on how accurate we, accurately we're looking at it. You really need to be above the, um, the number to see it perfectly clearly and perfectly well so that there's a minimum number of errors. Another one that we talk about is called a calibration error. This happens, for example, on a scale when you're weighing yourself. If you don't check to see that when it starts, it's actually sitting at the right position to start with on the zero, then the, the overall weight will be out. And of course, this is the one that's probably most important, is that the error due to the limit of reading of the measuring instrument. This is the one that we're going to focus on. An example of that is given below. We've got a one a ruler that measures in whole centimetres. There are no millimetres. And it's measuring an item. And so the question that's raised is, in this situation, what is the, the measurement? And so we have to say here the measurement would be 13 centimetres because we really would be guessing as to how many millimetres. Here, though, you can see that it's closer to 14 centimetres. And here, now this is interesting, it's actually still 14, even though it's now more than 14, we'd still take it to 14 centimetres as our most accurate measurement, considering the item that we're using to measure, in this case, a one centimetre ruler. And here, we're talking about 15 centimetres being the answer because the, the object is closer to 15 than it is to 14. So, that gives you an idea of how numbers can actually have the same measurement or items can have the same measurement but be actually significantly different to each other in length. The reason that we use these numbers though is simply because our ruler is a centimetre ruler and that's as accurate as we can measure. So let's have a look at an example Using the same sort of idea, it says, if the length of a rod is measured using the ruler above, the measurement is recorded as 14 centimetres. All right, so would this be the exact length of the rod? And it's fairly obvious that the answer to that would be no. And then between what values would the actual length lie? Well, here's 14 in all of these situations. And you'll notice that we only read it as 14 once it gets to 13.5. So you would say that the, um, the lower limit in that sense would be 13.5 centimetres. What about the upper limit? Well, if we got to 14.5, we'd then go up to 15. So we'd say the upper limit then is 14.5 centimetres. So what is the greatest possible error then in stating that the length is 14 centimetres? And the answer is half a centimetre, 0.5 centimetres. There it is there. That half there, that half there. There are our possible areas, errors. So how could we find a more accurate value of the length of the rod? And the only way we could do that is to use a ruler that has smaller units.
such as a millimeter ruler. That would work. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to have a look at this topic called uh, the greatest possible error. Now, I've already marked in a few important features here. Um, I'll just take this up the page a little so that we can see it a bit more clearly have a little more room. Greatest possible error is also called the absolute error. And we can also, from this, work out the percentage error. They're two different things, but they are related. They've mentioned that the rod above in the previous example was measured to the nearest centimetre because this is the smallest unit on the ruler. The length is closer to 14 centimetres than to 13 centimetres or 15 centimetres. So the greatest possible error is 0.5 centimetres, which is, and this is the significant part, half the smallest scale, which in the previous case was centimetres. So the smallest scale to which you can read it, if you halve that, that becomes what we call the greatest possible error. And you'll notice that the actual length was somewhere between 13.5 and 14.5, so if we take half away from 14 or half on top of 14, we get our, our possible error range. To obtain a more accurate measurement, there we go, we need a more accurate ruler, one with smaller units. So here we go, the smallest unit on a measuring instrument, in other words, the previous example would have been a centimetre, that is called the limit of reading. And the greatest possible error or the absolute error is half the limit of reading. All right, so first of all, you've got to identify what is the limit of reading and then to get the absolute error, halve it. So the smallest and largest values between the actual measurement lies are called the lower and the upper limit. So they're the upper and lower limits of true measurement. So there's a couple of steps we can go to actually get the answer to these questions. Here's one. For each of the following measures, find the smallest unit of measure. Now, this is a very, very important thing to do. Well, we're actually going to do this for each of these so we can quickly see the difference. Just write in a one there. All right. Now, the reason why we need to look at these together is to get an idea of the units that are being used here. Here you'll notice this, the smallest unit of measurement is one centimetre. Here it's one gram. Now this is interesting. This particular one goes to 2.4. Notice it's not a whole number, which tells us that in this particular case, the limit of reading is not a, um, not a kilogram, but 0.1 kilograms because it's to one decimal place. So that's a very, very important point. In this case, it's 0.6 of a second, so 12.6 rather, so the limit of reading is 0.1 seconds. So you've got to watch out for those decimal places, not just say, oh, seconds, you've got to actually look at the number to get the right answer. So what would be the greatest possible error? Well, once again, we're going to do these one after the other to get the sequence. So the greatest possible error in this particular case would be half of one centimetre. Here it would be half of one gram. Here it would be half of 0.1 kilograms. And here it would be half of 0.1 seconds. So writing this out more accurately, we would say that the greatest possible error, half of one centimeter, 0.5 centimeters, half of a gram, 0.5 grams. What about half of 0.1 kilograms? Well, that would be 0.05 kilograms and in this case the same thing half of 0.1 is 
five seconds. So it's very important that we notice that when there are decimals, that is the point or the smallest measure that we're looking at because it's measuring to 0.1 of a kilogram, 0.6 of a second. So we're going to look at those uh, more accurate levels in order to work out the greatest possible error. All right, let's have a look now at an example which asks us just a little bit more information. It says here, for each of the following measures, find the smallest unit of measurement, then the absolute error, then the lower and upper limits of the true measurement. So we're going through one extra step here. So let's do this like this, one, two, and three. So seconds, and notice that it's whole. So we would have to say that the um, smallest measure, unit of measurement is one second. Here, it's 0 0.1 kilograms because it's to one decimal place. And here, now this is interesting, is 0.38 meters. 0.38, oh, I'm sorry, not 0.38 meters. That's what we're actually looking at. It's 0.01 meters. That's the actual level of accuracy that we're looking at. All right, so now let's work out the absolute error. Now all of these should have been ones, shouldn't they? So let's just change that. There we go, one and one. All right, so the absolute error is half of that. So that's half of one second. So half of one second is 0.5 seconds. Half of 0.1 kilograms is equal to 0.05. Kilograms and half of 0 0.01 meters is equal to 0 0.005 meters. And finally, the upper and lower limits. The lower and upper limits of the true measurement, well, the lower limit is what we'll work out first. So I'll write these in, lower limit. That would be equal to 16 minus 0.5 which is 15.5 seconds. Here, it would be 5.7 minus 0 0.05, which would give us 5.65 kilograms. And here, it would be 9.38 minus 0 0.005 so you can see it's actually quite quite low so it would be 9.375 meters what about the upper limit now i'm just going to give myself a little bit more room here there we go so the upper limit is adding on. So we'd have 16 plus 0 0.5. That's 16.5 seconds. This would be 5.7 plus 0 0.05, which would be 5.75 kilograms. And in this case, it would be 9.38 plus 0 0.05 
plus 0 0.005, which would give you 9.385 um, meters. So there's an example of the true limits, the true limits. So the true limits of this particular one is between 15.5 and 16.5 seconds. And this one between 9.375 meters and 9.385 meters.